fans. The fans were unbelievable tonight. Made a huge impact in the game. 12 penalties they had. I don't know how many of those were false starts, but that was huge. To get them off schedule like that, um, credit goes to them, putting them in certain situations. So, again, keep coming, guys, because it, it is making a difference. Uh, but that's a tough football team. Um, I, I told Coach Vegan at halftime we'd probably see you again. That's a really good football team, and I was proud of our defense and how we responded. Uh, we we kind of bled a little bit in the in the run game at times, and uh, we'll fix that. Um, but the spirit of the team is strong, and these guys were resilient. Um, told them at halftime that it's a 60-minute game. We didn't play our, our best half. We responded in the second, and uh, Mark Ranowski would tell you as well, it probably wasn't his best game. Uh, missed some reads, kind of got tense at times, but in critical moments, that kid is clutch, and uh, we're blessed to have him as our quarterback. And how about Griffin Wildey? You know, a freshman on the biggest stage in front of all these fans, and um, makes a huge play and a huge moment. I would hate for the game to come down to a, a review. You know, I'm not settling in on that, but it is a huge win in the program. That's a, it's a championship caliber football team in Montana State, so um, we'll take a win any, any way we can right now. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm, happy with, I'm happy that we won, but we'll readdress the issues moving forward and, and get better about that weather. Uh, while you're waiting for the review, were you confident? Did you feel like the – it was an incomplete pass, and you just were trusting in them, or what did you think? Well, I would rather not trust in the <laughs> in the review because um, we've been on the other side of that, and we felt like we had it. Um, yeah, we just need to execute when we're tired down the stretch there, and in those critical moments, we got to come up in the biggest of ways. And um, I would rather have us been able to knock the ball down and been in the right position and um, let it go to the booth and then make that call. Um, but those quarterbacks are tough. Running backs were tough. That was a really good old line. Um, it was a battle, and that's what we expected. We preached it all week that this would be a 60-minute game. Uh, it took all 60. Frustrating at times that it, it seemed pretty obvious what they were trying to do with Chambers, and he just kept getting his yards. You know what? The kid will kill you with his arm, too, and, I, and people could say he's a better runner than he is a passer. I'm sure he is. Um, but you can't live in cover zero the whole game, right? So they line up and empty, and... Um, they make you defend all 11. I said that earlier in the week, and our guys responded. And at times, the second and ones and the second and threes, and those aren't worth the big shot. And that's not worth the. Um, we just got to keep battling and stay the course. And so, I'm proud of our defensive staff. Um, you know, they created some wrinkles that we're going to have to adjust to and continue to address throughout the season because offense in the league and offense in college football, right? Uh, everybody goes back to the same plays that they saw you struggle with. So we'll fix the, the mistakes. Uh, we'll, we'll fix some of the scheme stuff that they caught us in, and we'll keep getting better. Um, this is only week two. We got a full season ahead of us. This doesn't mean that really anything. We're 2-0, and and I'm happy about it, but we got to get ready to play the next week. You alluded to halftime. Did you get after him a little bit after that first half, or was it much more encouraging building them up sort of talk? No, it's uh, they knew they didn't play their best football. You know, they, they know that we're better than that. Um, it was just how many false starts did we have? We had multiple false starts. We had two unsportsmanlike conducts for losing our cool. One of them was just a, a bonehead mistake of throwing a hand warmer up in the air. I mean, 63 degrees, we got hand warmers on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like stuff like that, it will kill you. And um, I'm proud of the group on how they responded. We told them the whole week, you gotta, you got to handle the moment, and it's not what you do, it's how you respond after the things that are bad happen to you, and I'm happy with how they responded. It seems like one of the common themes after the game was everybody saying, hey, we'll see you again. You know, how do you feel a game like this kind of amplifies whatever rivalry there was between you guys and Montana State coming into tonight? Well, I think when you're a championship caliber program like Montana State, I think it's just knowing who you're playing against and those, the feuds. And the more you play each other, the more it turns into feeling like a rivalry because you got to knock off one another to get to the ultimate goal. Um, for me, it's not block out the outside noise, execute your job, and do it at a really high level. Um, rivalry, you know. Uh, I, I don't know, I just think about winning this next game, you know, and I'm going to be locked in on Drake moving forward on winning that game. And uh, 
you look too far ahead and you think things are easy, that's when you slip up, and we've done that in years past. So uh, we're going to reset our focus. They're going to enjoy tonight and reset our focus tomorrow on Drake and, and keep getting better uh, because we got it. Uh, this is a hard league to play in, and uh, we know what's to come. Guys, uh, force them to three field goals. What did you think of your red zone defense? I, I think the red zone defense was solid, and I think the fans, you know, one of the – the, the weather, the wind was not an issue today. So I wanted to defer, you know, and I wanted to pin them into that end zone so that they had to come out with our student section there. I think it made a difference um, throughout the game. And then they were, when they were going in to score, the student section again rose up and got them off schedule. So home field advantage, yeah, we'll take it for sure. Um, that's like playing in the Fargo Dome, right? And, and uh, our guys showed up tonight. and. Um, I'm proud of them, and I'm just I'm proud of the response of our guys more than anything else. You talked about how you didn't play great for a staff. What, if any, adjustments as a staff did you guys make in the locker room? You know, we did some different stuff with the front defensively. Um, offensively, it was seeing a couple different things that they haven't given us in the past. Um, they hit us on a, on a pressure that our back kind of missed because he was coming from safety depth and got us off schedule. Some of it was us getting ourselves off schedule, you know, and, and, and the false starts. But I'm really proud of Isaiah Davis. I mean, I think in that second half, you, you felt him carry us there for a while. And Amar Johnson starting the second half with a huge run like that just lit the fans up, uh, and the momentum started swinging in our favor. Um, it, was a huge, it was a huge part of the game. I mean, we scored uh, right away in the third, and then we were able to follow it up with 13 in the, in the fourth, and so... Championship teams respond, and I'm proud of these guys, but we got to get better. Special teams had a real rough stretch there early in the fourth quarter. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, that needs to get better. We'll clean up the miscues on the punt. Um, those plays will lose in games. And then we gave up the huge return, which sparked them. Now, Marquis Johnson is an unbelievable returner. He's probably the best in the country at what he does. We recruited him here. He actually came on a visit here. Um, I wish he was on our team. Um, but. Yeah, we'll clean up, we'll clean up the mistakes and, and keep getting better. We got a lot of guys on that on that sideline that maybe didn't get in that should have got in, and we'll reassess that as far as uh, building depth and uh, utilizing fresh legs on special teams. And the big message that we try to send to our entire football team is that your best players play on special teams. That it's not an afterthought. When a game like that that takes a full sixty minutes, um, we need to get guys in on special teams that be fresh and and uh, execute in a critical situation. And, and uh, that's more on me than anything else. You know, we'll get better though. I'm, I'm excited for this group, and but we can't have block punts. Mark didn't play his best game, and then in the two-minute offense, made a great throw to Graham, and then the next play to Griffin, you, you used the word clutch. What is it like having that kid at quarterback leading your program? I think since he's gotten here, he's been a winner. And I don't think that has changed since he's been here. The guy's trust in Mark. Um, it's hard to explain his leadership because when he was a true freshman, uh, if you can win over the defense and the defensive players are staying as a true freshman, that kid should be the starting quarterback to us as coaches. Um, it's who he is. He's a winner. And I'm excited what he was able to do. Um, huge throw. Stepping up. He got hit multiple times in the pocket. And he didn't shy away from it. He's a winner for sure. Um, I'm proud of Griffin Wildey. I told you last week that who he will be at week four, week eight, will be so much better than what he was last week. And he stepped up again in a critical moment and broke a tackle and had a huge play in the game that changed the game. And uh, that's what a championship program does. They, they respond and we respond tonight. And we've got to put it behind us tomorrow and keep moving forward.